I am unashamed. What about you? No, I was encouraged. I mean, what I've been doing, I guess the Lord lined this up, is I keep sharing with young people. I mean, they're just everywhere I go and everything I do. It seems to be about 15 to 25. But I had a thought the other day. I mean, we're going through John. Missy and I were out at camp. Really teaching about worship, but my whole deal is I'm not real concerned about how you worship versus who. You you fall in love with Jesus, which is what we're doing in the book of John. But I did have a thought, and I was talking to John Luke, which he, he runs a camp out there. I forgot if he said it, I said it. We were talking about the biggest difference when we were kids, when I was, or you know, I was, I, was, I went out to camp as a senior in high school, the first time ever. But one of us, the basic thrust of what we were saying, which was kind of an epiphany, was that when we were younger, I used to, the goal was to go to heaven. In my faith, that was the goal. And you say, well, it's a good go. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Well, now I thought about it. That's not really, I'm really more thinking, I want to be with Jesus forever in heaven, which there's a difference. Because my point is, if it's just about your reward without the motivation or the image of God, you tend to get do as least as possible it's all these questions we keep reading in john what what must i do what does the lord require or what good thing must i do to you remember what the rich young ruler Mm. said i mean what what is the what is the reward because i realize yeah there's a reward here but it's more of a focus on jesus because i really don't care where we live doesn't matter. That's why you find joy here, right? Despite difficulty. Yeah, I said it um, last Sunday when I was in my sermon that if you get Jesus right, then other things fall in line for all the things you're looking for. I think a lot of our, I read a lot of emails and we get letters from a lot of our listeners and our and our viewers of our podcast, and it's interesting because it, there's so everybody's on a you know on a path, but everybody's in different places along the path. That that kind of drives some of the questions we get asked too, which is what happens in John. But it's interesting. Everybody, I, I tell everybody, it has to start with a focus on who Christ is, why He came here, what He did for you, and then how that impacts you going forward. Yesterday, Jace, I sat down with a. It was really interesting because it was a. And I hadn't seen her since she was probably a teenager. She's in her twenties now, got two little kids, and it's uh, it was Ashley, Jill's daughter, mm-hmm. and uh, so Jill is she let she's a listener on our podcast, and we've talked about her before. She uh, one of our Jace's early folks that he led to Jesus, and Jill's you know had some rocky moments along the way, but she's locked in for, on Jesus, and so. Here was now her daughter looking for that. You know, they're they're stationed overseas. Her husband's in the military. And, you know, she was like, I feel like I'm on a path, but I just don't know. I'm not sure anymore. You know, one time when she was young, because she grew up with us and she had a surety about it. But now mm-hmm. a lot of life has happened, a lot of mistakes. And now she's got two children. And I said, well, what's driving you to want to know more about Jesus? And she said, well, I got, I got two kids. And mm-hmm. she said, if I don't get it right, then they ain't going to get it right. Which was great. I mean, that's that's great. Yeah, I believe that's why God set this whole thing up, I where you actually have kids and have the ability to procreate, and because it's like you can be the worst person in the world, and then become a mother or father, and mm. then we have a spark of hope. That's right. Because there's one thing that kind of stops you in your tracks there, and all of a sudden you say, "Well, you know, maybe I should." Do a little better, because <laughs> they're thinking of their kids, right? And uh, well, she told me she was like, so we sat there for an hour and we talked, and I just basically shared Jesus with her, shared the gospel, 
what he did for her, just gave her that reminder, some passages, you know, and, and sent some with her. You know, we usually write them down. And at the end of it, she said, well, Mr. Allen, I, I really, you know, she was about to hop on a plane in three hours to go to Germany, you know, with her kids, yeah. to, with her husband. And she said, I kind of want to be baptized, too. I said, well, let's talk about that. Why, why is that? And then she told me, and it was really interesting because from our discussion about what she had learned about Jesus, she said, I, I, want it, I want to know and I want to, be, I want to leave here feeling like I'm on a path. I said, well, look, what happens is after today, so we baptized her, but what happens is after today, I said, Jesus is your North Star now. You, you always got a way. The path is always, as long as you focus on him, stuff that happens in this life, I mean, yeah, there's going to be bad times. Your kids are going to go struggle. You and your husband are going to go struggle. You're in the military. That that alone is a struggle, you know, for most marriages. So, but she um, left there with on a pathway, yeah. you know, a, a clarity, which is awesome. I mean, that's what really this is all about. Well, I don't want to pour any cold water on you, on your musings, but uh, <laughs> well, so don't just yeah. <laughs> just Put some remember, warm water. Just in there. remember it, what the verses that just come to my mind when you guys are talking there. <clears throat> Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him and what we're discussing must believe he exists, which is a, a weird thing to say, mm -hmm. and he does reward those who earnestly seek him. Correct. I mean, the reward, uh, don't be ashamed to testify about our Lord, ashamed to be his prisoner. He, he's, he's locked up over this thing. And his life has been turned upside down. Oh, yeah. But he's just taking it all in, saying, Are ashamed of me as prisoner, join with me in suffering for the, by, uh, for the gospel by the power of God. He saved us. He's called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed in what we've been talking about in John chapter 8, the revealing Jesus appears. Who is he? What, what, what's he fixing to do? It's been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus. That was 2,020 years ago. Who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He said, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher of that. That's why I stick with that. But if you read that, you say, you know, this, this, this is big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, for anyone. Once you introduce the word I mean, I'm not saying you're doing it for, I'm not saying that, not to, not to bring the, the reward down, but that's quite the reward. Life and immortality is brought to light through the gospel. I'm just saying immortality, Al, is the age-old question Men of faith like ourselves, we're looking at saying, uh, we have this great hope. Someone without a knowledge of Jesus Christ, their hope would be maybe he won't be there yeah. when I finally die. But we look at it, we say, he's destroyed. I don't even, he's think, I don't even think they're thinking that. It, it's like when you read that verse, you know, it's a famous verse, but to people who have never heard it, when you say anyone, uh, faith being, no, no, what was that when you read that, that, that he must believe yeah. that he exists? Yeah. Uh, without yeah. faith, Hebrews. Hebrews. yeah, Hebrews 12, 11, 6. 11, 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. But a lot of people read that, they think, oh, so I got to believe. It's, they, they're focusing on the word must, and they're missing the point. If you don't believe he exists, obviously nothing's going from that point on. He he wasn't saying like what we're talking about. Here are the requirements. Yeah. Number one, believe that he exists. Yeah. Okay. No, it, it's a little <laughs> deeper than that, <laughs> it, which, deeper. which is why because if to You're believe saved by grace through faith, get over it. Yeah, they just they're not they're looking at it like a college course where they're answering the right question. Well, I use marriage as an illustration for that a lot of times because it's like you don't say, you don't walk up and this person, uh, I'm attracted to them, they're funny, I kind of like them, and then, you know, you don't. the discussion is not, well, what do I need to do to marry this person? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's way deeper. I mean, like, it's a well, relationship growth. <laughs> it's, you know, to get to a point where you say the I do's, 
it's much deeper than just give me the requirements of what I, what do I need if if I marry this guy, what do I got to do to be a good husband? Or but wife? but also, you're never gonna. It's never gonna line up. That's why a lot of people go around and talk about all the evidences where God exists. Which look, I love talking about those things. I think They're it's fantastic. massive. You're never gonna prove it because we just read that without faith, it's impossible. And faith is not seeing yet believing. Believing. You're going down I've a never, road. I've never seen him. <laughs> I've never seen him. So, and people say, well, that's all I got to do, which is not true because here we're reading, if you believe what we're reading in the four gospels, he was showing them, this is who I am. But the mind is, is a powerful thing. You're, you're like, eh, maybe this is a trick. I mean, what? Cause you just don't know what you don't know. Right, and all we know is we just showed up here, looked around, and started trying to figure it out, which I think was God's plan all along. Right, I think the number one reason the prob what happens is like it's just what happened to you know Missy's grandma. I told the story on, on a previous podcast. She gets the coronavirus, she goes to the hospital. They're like, I guess it's a miracle she's healed. I mean, she was there one day. Sent her home. We're all jumping up and down. Like, how old was she? She's ninety-two. Ninety-two. So for a few days, she'd she had already she, beaten the odds. Well, yeah, oh, a few days she feels fine, and then all of a sudden she starts feeling bad again. A couple of days later, she dies. And so, you know, in my mind, I'm like, "What's all this about? I mean, what she? Yeah, you, know, you try to make sense of that, mm-hmm. and." You kind of have to step back because Missy's upset, you know, to her grandma. Not that we don't, I'm 100% sure we'll see her again and she's in heaven. But you just go through the process of all the memories. And, mm-hmm. you know, she, her and, and her husband, he, who, he, he went on to be with the Lord a few years ago, four or five years ago. I mean, they lived with us for a while or in our little guest house. And so we're really close to them. But, you kind of have that conversation of, well, what were we thinking? She's 92. And we, and we had this moment, which I think it was a God thing. Thank you God, want her God, to, you yeah. want her to live on. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think, I mean, look, if, if you have your druthers, do you want to stay in a hospital and die? Or do you want to feel better, go home, <laughs> and, and, and then. And die with her Yeah, da- I mean. With that, her family there yeah, with her. with her yeah. family and her daughter there. And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense to me. Because she's 92. The what, text what? I quoted, he has, at his appearing, has destroyed death. Yeah. Well, if you believe that, you you have a different view. And I would think the pain wouldn't be as great. If if you uh, you believed that mm-hmm. he had destroyed death, yeah, you just step over on the other side. I get I get uh, uh, a little solace in that. Oh yeah, a you, lot you of know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the world tries to say though they look at that situation and they're like, well, why if there's a God, why why did that happen? You know, I mean, what in every situation they're always looking at. The negative in that, well, yeah, she's supposed to be a daughter of God. Why didn't why didn't he heal her? Like she's ninety two. This is not what we're about. The journey will continue. But they're like, Yeah, but why did this this is terrible. Uh. <laughs> so I think that is the conundrum because I think the number one excuse for people not following Jesus is, you know, why do why do bad things happen? Oh, you get it all the time. Let's let's take a break. So one of our uh, one of our sponsors, Patriot Mobile. Uh, if you haven't made the switch to those guys, uh, their latest promotion may be what you're looking for. Right now, they give you a choice: either get a brand new phone, or if you want to keep your existing phone, you get a month of free service. So it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, they're a Christian conservative company, uh, and compared to a lot of other phone carriers, of course, that's a big comparison. They've got plans that start as low as 25 bucks for the U.S.-based uh, customer service. They say it's number one. So you might want to check these guys out. Nationwide 4G service, um, 972-PATRIOT. That's 972-PATRIOT. 
or you can visit patriotmobile.com slash Phil to check these guys out and see if uh, you want to switch over to them. There you go, Phil. Um, well, Jason, what I always say is the resurrection changes everything. If, if you believe that. That is if, correct. If you believe it happened, and if you believe it's going to happen to us, which is what the Bible tells us and Jesus told us, that's the game changer. I mean, like, then if the if death can't beat you. I was more cut to the heart when I was 28 when old Bill Smith preached the gospel to me. And by the way, you know, some his, of our listeners, there's a Bill Smith that's an evangelist out there because I get, I'm getting a lot of letters. That's not the Bill Smith. Ours is William H. Smith, and he's not around anymore. He's passed Some on. of you have well, misunderstood. That. I'm sure there's but, thousands of people <laughs> well, named Bill Smith. And well, yeah, one of them a, is a preacher, a, and some I mean, people are studying him, and they're sending me his stuff, and I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't you know go to guy. any hotel registry <laughs> around here, and there'll be a few yeah, well, Bill Smith. There was John Doe and Bill Smith. <laughs> yeah, this, John this Smith This particular Bill. Bill Smith, the first phase of the gospel, God becoming flesh, and I was like, whoa. But I was not I was not convicted yet. I'm just listening. In the second phase, when he died on a cross for my sins, I said, Man, I got a lot of them. Yeah. I said, So that's pretty good news. Right. Which is gospel good. But when he got to that next one, and then three days later he was raised from the dead, I'm like, Whoa now, wait a minute. Do what? And my exact words were, how did I ever miss that? Right. Till I was 28 years old. I don't know whether I was hearing it and really not listening. You know, one of these deals right. where you heard it, but it's, you, you, you know, the, and where the Bible says forces of evil. Ever seeing, but not seeing. Ever hearing, but not hearing. But when I zeroed in on Jesus was raised from the dead, therefore you can be. I might have to tell you, boy, something. That's the one that got me. I said, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong side of this thing. I didn't know we were talking about being raised from the dead. I said, I said, whoa. So I was trying to digest that, but I said, I actually said, i tell you what. This sounds too good to be true. That was my exact words. Yeah. This sounds too good to be true. Yeah. I mean, surely this is – of course, I'm jotting them down. I said, I'm going to jot down what you're saying to me, dude. And I said, I'm going to go back myself to verify what you were speaking about. Where did you find that? And he'd give me the verse, and I'd write it down. He'd give me the I mean, I, I took notes. Yeah. Well, we part. He said, what do you think? I said, I'll be back in touch with you. I said, I got to verify to see if this is because this sounds too good to be true. His reply was, it probably is too good for all of us. But it is true. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm fixing to find it out. Let me research. And I said to him three days later after I did the research on who Jesus is and what he did, what he's now doing at the right hand of the Father, what he will do, reappear. Well, three days later, I said, here's the deal. I want you to come down here and pick me up. And he said, I want you to drive me to a pool of water. I don't care where it is, pond, creek, pothole. I said, get me to some water based on what I've read here. And I said, don't wreck the vehicle on the way over there. Drive slow. <laughs> you were ready. And he busted out laughing, but I, he did come get me. We went down there, and he baptized me. Right. And now it's 45 years later, Al. That's right. Well, you know, Paul said something interesting about that, Dad, just what you were talking about in First Corinthians 15, which, by the way, man, if you ever want to do a – you know, good read on the resurrection. That's your chapter. In verse 17, he said something interesting. He said, if Christ has not been raised, in other words, if it didn't really happen, he's telling the group. And then, some of the Corinthians were saying it didn't happen. That's right. That's right. He's chewing them out nicely. That's right. Your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. That's how crucial the resurrection is to every part of it. I mean, it really does. To me, it's like the linchpin of Christianity. I mean, that's kind it of is. that central thought. And, and, and Paul basically said that. And so he said, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. That's so right. even if you believed he was the son of God, so what's he telling that audience then? Even if you believe that, but you didn't believe the resurrection, <clears throat> you would miss it because 
this life's going to end for everybody if this was all we had. I was really devastated when I read Thomas Jefferson's writings in depth when he got to the resurrection. He was all there. in for Jesus, his interaction. This must bother you because you keep bringing this up. <laughs> I, I tell you, it hurt, Jefferson. man. It hurt when we got to the – Jesus died on a cross and, and that, uh, he, he it stopped It seems so shallow to think if this is all we got, this life. Well, that's an interesting point, though, Jace, because look, a lot of people who are super successful, obviously Thomas Jefferson was, and super smart. I mean, oh, super smart. Super brilliant. But sometimes they have that problem stepping across that final threshold. You think about it. I was thinking about Luke 16 when Jesus did that parable about the rich man and Lazarus. And, you know, he made the point in there that, you know, the Lazarus spent his whole life in a, in a terrible situation. The rich man had everything. But at some point, when you when you cross over into the great beyond, that doesn't matter anymore. But I think a lot of people that have intellect and have success and have money and property and all these things, sometimes those are the hardest people to really Thomas believe. Thomas Jefferson, you know? uh, some guy well, sent me. I, I don't forgot yeah. who sent me the Bible, but it was it was the Thomas Jefferson Bible. And him, he, he, uh, without the resurrection, uh, yeah, yeah, he's and not pontific- sure. So I'm reading it from first page, and I go, and I'm getting toward the end, and I said, "Come on now, come on, <laughs> come on out with it." And it said they killed him by nailing him to a cross. And so I, looked at, I looked at the next play page, and I was out of the. It's p- like watching a movie where the star <laughs> oh, dies. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, right? I With was every movie I've just, seen I, that. I happen, sat there and said, like "I said, come <laughs> on, Thomas, come on." It was just a blank on the next page. I turned it. I said, "Oh my goodness!" I knew there was something way back in my mind. I said, "But he just didn't seem all in," and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. But when I got <clears> got to the gospel. And I learned from what he had said up to then, mm-hmm. his lifestyle, the perfect life, the way to treat people. He said, the country, we found the country on this individual. He was such a great model in when it comes to behavior. Right. And he mm-hmm. zeroed in that and couldn't get around it. But when he got to the miraculous part, anything supernatural, Thomas well, it's said, like no. I had uh, a great man. I, I, yeah. I used to have a raging debate. He had everything but faith yep. uh, in the gospel. Al. Yep. I used to have a raging debate with one of our Hollywood producers who was an atheist, and we were friends because I said, look, without the resurrection, Hollywood would be nothing. And he was like, what? what? I said, all your, all your crappy movies, the guy <laughs> won't die. And even when he does, guess what? He comes back. I was like, now you're just saying, well, he wasn't dead, but you're tapping into that resurrection. People like that concept that, oh, it's over? Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's not. Even the bad guys, you know, the razor blade hands, those guys, they keep coming back. All the superheroes. I mean, they literally, they get run over by a bus. But it didn't kill him because he has this, he ate some Whatever they eat, uh-huh. you Look, know, they're driving some... vehicles off of cliffs, and you know, cable <laughs> oh, catch them, yeah. and they barely made it. And, uh, the what? plane crashes, you know, like right when it's crashing, he just steps out. Yep. You know, in theory, that seems good, but that would really wouldn't work. You know what I mean? It's like right before you crash, just step out. They can easily resurrect them, and people, yay! <laughs> yeah. Especially when the the franchise we is making Clint money. Is, the the thought, resurrection is linked to the money. We thought Eastwood was a little slow on that last draw when they filled him full of holes. No, <laughs> no. no. Bullets were hitting all around him, but none, none hit the... Well, somebody told me that about the outlaw Josie Wells, which, by the way, I was at the go store last night had, and wore a mask for the first time. Now that the governor made a right. edict. And look, I want to say I'm a team player. I mean, once we decide, okay, that's the law. And there was a deputy in front of the grocery store. And if you didn't have a mask on, they said, go away. I saw three girls get turned away. And, and I and thought, now you think, if I'm going to buy groceries, but cause well, the reason- well, I thought, well, why don't though they, the store supply mask? They should. I mean, that's, that would make it. We're better. trying to give you our money, right? The governor said you got to wear a mask. Yeah. Okay, I I'm in. I'll, that. I'll, 
I'll go along. I'll play along. But now I go to the store. I don't have a mask, so I can't buy any groceries. You don't want my money. Mask making has turned into a a. Uh, I, oh, it's quite the cottage yeah. industry. Oh, oh, it's well. Look, it's this big, mask I put bucks. on when I go to the truck, or when I went to take it off, it just snap. You know, <laughs> just on a piece of junk. <laughs> so but anyway, I, so I, the tag on it was probably nine ninety nine, but it wasn't thirty cents worth of material in it. Oh, less than that. <laughs> not, not like five pennies. Hang, hang on, let's take a break. So one of the. Um, companies that uh, we talk about on here quite a bit is a, a company called Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E. And what they specialize in is uh, HR management, being able to do it online, human resources. <laughs> I always have to tell Jace what HR means. <laughs> he thinks home run, uh, whatever. Yeah, what I mean, you know, human resources. Human they resources. They deal with humans. That's they right. manage humans and and that is your greatest resource when you have a company so and it's probably the most difficult it is the most difficult especially in this day and age because you got lawsuits you got all these things you have to the government puts on you so, i thought you were going to say sinful behavior <laughs> well that too you got that too because you got this sexual harassment stuff that goes yeah. on so you got a lot of stuff so anyway what basically they do instead of having to hire an hr guy you can use them uh they're month to month no hidden fees you can cancel any time so you go to them, you get a free HR audit, see if they can help you. You go to Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash Robertson. You get your free audit. Check it out. See if these guys can help you. So the story I was going to tell is uh, the only person in there without a mask was this little kid. So that, I, I knew he knew how it was because every time I would like cross an aisle, he, he'd be looking, you know. <laughs> Had the look, didn't he? <laughs> we call it the he looky seemed, <laughs> I would say he looked seven or eight. So what he said was shocking to me because when we got in line, he come up there and he said, Mr. Chase. I said, yeah. He said, I've seen the outlaw Josie Wales. <laughs> 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 well, after you, what is a seven year old kid listening to the podcast? <laughs> yes, I and told it, you kids are listening to our podcast. But I was saying that to say because somebody wrote in, they said, "Well, I didn't like the outlaw Josie Wells because he died at the end." And I was like, he "Died at the end? Yeah, he didn't die." Well, at my the end. my father in law, who's a, who was an awesome man, Hoot Gibson. He said the same when we were talking about movies one day, and he said, "Well, I tell you, we were talking about West. He loves West. And he said, I tell you one I don't like." And I was like, what is it? And he said, the outlaw Josie Wells. And I, I was like, for I was kind of like, Jesus. I would have just got up right then. <laughs> I was walked like, out the I was door. so shocked because it was my favorite. No, that's movie. different. This is my father in law. And I was like, why didn't you like the outlaw Josie Wells? He said, because he died at the end. He said the exact same thing. He, they took the blood dripping on the boot as he was gut shot. It's what his mind said. I said, well, he didn't die. It's Hollywood. That's they what never I said. Died. He came back and did another movie a yeah. couple years later. That's what I said. <laughs> well, and there was a sequel book written, too. You know, plus, he didn't Plus, die. you could tell it hadn't hit a big vein. Yeah. It was just a drippage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> that's you like could, the other movie, Hard to Kill. <laughs> you could oh, tell he left that. there riding a horse. He's all right. <laughs> He's all right. He got He's over. He's going to live with the Indians. He went over there. What, what happened to all this words of life? What's your, Shall be life. <laughs> yeah, what was that old chief's name? Blue. Uh, no, ten, uh, ten, bears. Ten, yeah, bears. ten Bears. Yeah, Ten Bears. Remember that? Ten Bears, they had them a little medicinal in. Comanches, they could come up with good medicine. <laughs> well, he plus he had low They were friends, you know, now. We, we're, My uh, point is, they'll find a way to make <laughs> you live on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even exactly. though they'll say, well, I don't believe in God or life after death. Well, every movie that's any good, they won't die. I'm a man you of couldn't. a C-plus uh, acumen, but you say if there's a chance with a historical figure that I know was here, too much written about him, if there's a chance to escape death through this individual, just one individual has ever, would ever convince me of this. Just one. Right. Someone, perfect man, perfect God, sacrifice, the prophets, all this lead lead work to get him here. He shows up, what he said, what he did, the things that I, I said, well, if there's ever going to be a chance to live beyond the grave, he's yep. your man. Right. I mean, I'm just absolutely, I, I challenge anyone, atheist, whatever, just look at the story about Jesus and say, so you're saying there's a chance. You're like, 
Well, I'm you think about what we've chance. been studying in John eight fifty eight, which I said I'm all in. I, I gotta know. I put forth that this is the greatest one line in the history of the world. It better be a doozy, Jay. It's got to be a good Before one. Before Abraham said? was born, I am. <laughs> it's a line. That's a line. That's a doozy. It, a spanner if of If you all heard time. that in any circumstance, and just put in your whatever person, if you heard someone say that, and they said that about a historical person, what would you think? I would think, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, now, wait a minute. Before Abraham, he said, I was there with Abraham. And they're like, yeah. I mean, they said, look, if you're not 45, you're not 40 years old. And you're saying you were there when Abraham was there? My yeah. first impression would be 1-800-PSYCHO. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what I would think. I've often said that this was a bunch of about 40 lunatics that came up and concocted this story, mm. or they were on to something, mm -hmm. one or the other. All the way back to Genesis, the water, the ball of water and separating and calls it sky and the dry ground. You just start reading all this. You say, wait a minute here. Who wrote this? Yeah. So well, they claim Moses wrote it. And I'm like, what is it, world traveler? He's been all over the world to know about <laughs> seas. I said, how in the world would he have known this? I said, he's either a complete idiot. And then you read well, it, you say, well, why does it make sense? Well, but that's the thing, though. Th this whole thing <laughs> provides such a better pathway even to live. I mean, think about statements like sure. Jace just read. I mean, that elevates you. I was thinking about, you know, Phyllis, our sister, <laughs> wrote an amazing blog, which you read it, didn't you, Dad? Yep, Miss Kay gave it to me. Fantastic. And it, by the way, it's on our website, alanlisarobertson.com, if you want to go read it. I said that, thought to myself when I read that, I said, that girl, that, that's a smart girl. She's very smart. I was I was glad to be thinking, boy, I'm glad I had a little. And she, just, she basically just told, you know, a, a piece of the story we've told our audience in this blog. But what was so beautiful about it is how she realized that God had had his hand on her as she followed him and served him, even though she was in bad circumstances and situation growing up. They said she walked to the church building. Oh, she's, she's 10 a, years old. She opened 12. a checking account when she was 12 years old. I mean, that's how independent and on her own she was. But she always sought Jesus through the whole process, and he protected her. I, there's no doubt in my mind to get us to where we're now we have this relationship with her. But the point I was going to make was is that overwhelmingly people have responded because hundreds of thousands of people have seen it now on our website. And most of it is positive. Some are people that say, my situation, I wish mine had turned out that way, hard times. But there was one that was on Facebook that just, Phyllis sent it to me, and she said, would you, here was Phyllis's response, which, I, again, I love. She said, would you and Lisa pray with me for this woman? Because she's in a lot of pain. And then it was just this woman, her life had been terrible. She had a similar situation, but instead of finding some peace and good things, she found terrible things and then she had other things but it was like in my mind it was like she was so bitter and life had been so bad and i and so we did pray for her because i thought if she could just find jesus he could lead her out of this terrible awful i mean the, sure could. you think about it, the crappier your life is the more you need him mm -hmm. to guide you through the process so it just reminded me that you know people are hurting out there and so bitter because the evil one they've got all these twisted situations and but look the gospel is the only thing that gives you some peace and hope yeah. out of that you know peace of mind in the year 2020 peace of mind al among the human race it's a rare commodity i would argue 2020 as much as any year in, Me too. in my lifetime when you find watching, these uh when you know a lot of people when you say when you find jesus which people who don't know jesus they're like well how exactly <laughs> does that work but you know, somebody, I don't know who decided to make everything Jesus said in red letters, but that was a, I think that was a good idea. Great idea. But it's like the story that we're fixed to dive into in John 9, because you see Jesus run up on a situation where we've all been, which is a bad thing has happened, and we think, why is this happening? Right. And... If you just look at everything Jesus did, everywhere he went, how he did it, it's it's you literally start having light bulb moments about your life. That's right. Because Plus, it, how could you be 
right all the time. I mean, how is it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what you just said was one of the things he said in John 8, 46, which we didn't talk about. But he said, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Well, that's something I could never say. Me either. Oh, are you kidding? I mean, I could be lying. <laughs> hang, on. Hey, hang on. Let's Which t- is a sin. Hang on. Let's uh, let's take a break. And I got a, I got a quote here for you on that point. So we've been talking about different reasons why Dad doesn't like the internet, and there are many. Uh, one of them is for a story that we've been telling about a woman who lost her home um, and she lost it online, which is, as you say, dad, that's just, there's a lot of thieving going on, a lot of evil in the world. And uh, this is just another way to do it. It's one of the the biggest uh, cyber crime growth areas. Unfortunately, people basically break in to find your home title and then can steal your home right out from under you. It happened to this woman named Deborah. So we want to encourage you guys to check this uh, company out, uh, it's uh, HomeTitleLock.com is where you go. You register your address. You find out uh, if this has happened to you, and then protect it. That's what they're going to do is they're going to put a, a wall up around your home title uh, so you won't have this happen to you. So if you go there, uh, HomeTitleLock.com, use the code Phil. They're going to give you your first 30 days of protection for free. So check these guys out. So, Dad, you, you'll appreciate this. The great theologian uh, Don Lemon on CNN, uh, here's what he said last week, which is interesting. You just read that verse. Jesus Christ, if that's who you believe in, Jesus Christ admittedly was not perfect when he was on earth. <laughs> who said that? Don Lemon of well, CNN. I don't know who that is. So, well, I know you wouldn't know. Dad knows who he is because he DVRs CNN and watches it every day. Uh, I had him. He interviewed. He interviewed me. One he time. did one time. I remember yeah. that. It was was it hostile or was he never got nasty? You know, the old Don Lemon wasn't near like the new Don Lemon. Yeah. He was a pretty decent fellow. But anyway, the point was he was saying, "Why are we deifying the founders of the country?" But what I'm saying is, in his why, mind, what? Why are we deifying the founders? He's, deifying? Yeah, making them more than they people should. People who followed Jesus. You know, George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, right. on and go. You say, how, you know, we, we can't deify them because they were followers of Jesus So Christ. that was his point. It, they but, were clear on who they followed, Jesus, all of them. But my point is, it was interesting, he was making his case, but he didn't know at all what he was talking about. Because he said Jesus admittedly was not perfect. Like, in other well, words, right. and now, he just that, said, That's the thing that stood out. I didn't get anything else you said but that. That's right. I'm like, admittedly, was it perfect? No, he was perfect. Yeah, and he right. admitted it. And he said, who can accuse me of sin? Because so, I mean, if he wasn't perfect, this wouldn't work. None of it would work. Because if I asked that question, they could come up with a lot of proof whether I, that I was a sinner. Right. But not him. Right. Well, it, it's not just that he wouldn't be a perfect sacrifice. How could you invent it, a perfect person, by the way? How could an imperfect person uh, invent well, a perfect person? How, it, could a, but a, he actually, how could a fallible person right. invent an infallible person? Wouldn't work. But, you know, a perfect person could create a perfect person. Correct. Which is, I believe a baby is perfect. Mm-hmm. I know there's theologies out there that, you know. Right. But which is really another thing that we're going to get into in John 9. Because right. it's like, well, whose fault was this that he was born blind? They were He was trying to attach blame from the get-go. Right. Well, let's, let's, read, let's go ahead and read these first few verses, and we'll, we'll dive on into it uh, and, and see how far we go. In John 9, verse 1, as he went along, Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. So this guy's blind, has never been able to see. His disciples asked him, this is really interesting, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who messed up? Yeah, who messed up? Which, Which really is why I said, and in, in on our earth, these were his disciples. Right. But the world, that's like, why do bad things happen? Why would this man be born blind? If there's a God... This should never happen. Which is interesting, number one, is that how could it have been the man's fault if he was born blind? Which the question was a little dumb 
he shouldn't even throw the guy in there. He was born he was born blind. How would it be his sin? Unless the, unless it was back to the side of original sin, which Judge talked about earlier. Or what he's really saying is, what did the parents? What? Did, how did they mess up? Where did they go wrong? Where did they go wrong? And he could have answered the question here, because it would have been. I mean, when I first read this, I was on the edge of my seat because <laughs> I wanted to know the answer. But let me give you a little background, though. So, so this this idea, and by the way, it's still here today. This people still believe this. I hear it all the time. They just use different words. There's a there's a a theory of it's called retribution that you mess up. And there's a price to pay. Now, we talk about there are consequences to behavior, but it's a whole theology that there's always – it's karma is what they call it now. In other words, for every bad act, you're going to have a some well, – something's going to happen. and in the Old Testament, there were curses that were handed down. That's you know, true. Ten generations or whatever, and, and it happened. Right. So they're looking at that history right. saying – but my theory about that has always been: you have generational sin and curses still today. Because what ha- you see, a fa- we know families that they're four or five generations into no education, drugging, terrible home life, terrible situation. Their kids grow up, and then they are fighting with and one another. It just multiplies. It multiplies. So that's. But it's not like you say, "Oh, well, God did that." No, their their behavior is what they can't come out of because some will come out of it. But you read the whole book of Job. All of Job's pals, the three that showed up, they believed in this to the core because they kept saying, "What'd you do? What'd you do?" I mean, you could sum Where, up all. Where'd those you things. go wrong? Where'd you go wrong? You did something. I mean, all this bad stuff wasn't happening. Job was like. I don't know. Well, I don't know. it ain't no different in my childhood. Exactly right. Every time something, what'd you do that for? <laughs> what, like, what were you doing down there? I keep going back to that boat paddle. You know, why would you want to break the boat paddle? I said, it I don't was know that Jason's still gotten over the boat It paddle. was made in China. China. That's how it broke. You're like, but it's did China. you swing it? I was like, yeah, but it was made. If you don't want me to break a boat paddle, Buy better built boat paddle because if a snake. My thought at the time was you don't take a boat paddle to kill various animals. I said because you may break the boat paddle. Boat paddles are for paddling, they're not for yeah. beating coons or possums. If to you death step out of the or boat, killing cotton mouths. If you step out of the boat and there's a cotton mouth there and he opens your mouth, I'm going to tell you, you what panic. you're going to do. You're going to grab whatever, what, whatever is nearby. And once you kill the snake and break the boat paddle that was made in China. You have spoken wisely, my son, because this morning about daylight, Dan is behind me in a wheeler, and I'm going one way, and he's going right behind me. And I look over, I stop the wheeler for something, and I look down, and there was a cotton mouth just a little past arm's length called up with his mouth open. And Mm. Dan said, that was... It's one of the most excellent display of sh- shooting that I've ever seen. He said, because in a flash, he said, without – you didn't put your head down. You just pointed it. Of course, he was just right there, so I just pointed it at him. And now he has – now he has – this is what you do with snakes, not bow paddles. You take a weapon. <laughs> But if you have one, well, we didn't look, have Jason's was, defense. He didn't have you one. You eliminate the threat. <laughs> so the snake, when I shot, pow! The snake just come up in the air about four feet. He's blown half in two, and he comes down over there. And I'm like, whoo! That would cut that little thing. Hey, all right, let's take one last break. So Dad's like, there ain't but one way to handle it. Well, see, to my point, that's what I'm saying. In that case. The retribution was immediately bestowed on Jace for this act of whatever. Now True, that- but I think they asked the question based on what the statement, the greatest line in the history of the world. Because you got to think about that. It, he said, "Before Abraham was born, I am." And they, you know, picked up some stones. That you know, right. but Jesus hid himself. Well, then it says, "As he went along," so it's right. You know, it's right. After. Yeah, they're like, well, all of a sudden, they're like, hey. I am, because they've probably been thinking, because that would have never left me. So they're like, hey, Mr. I am, <laughs> what about this situation? Yeah, what about this? Because now their their minds are starting to turn, Say, which is my point about when you are introduced to Jesus and you start looking into him and you start focusing on Jesus, all of a sudden it starts to open up a lot of things about life that you never considered 
possible That's right. to even think about. That's true. Because there, and I, I think it was a legitimate question. I mean, most people I hear preach on this, they're, they're kind of throwing them under the bus, but I'm like, it's a pretty good question. Well, because again, it's been, it's a thousands year old mindset that this has got to be the way it is. So what Jesus is about to tell them is this is new territory. I mean, no, uh, nobody said this before he says it. So he, here's his answer, straightforward, verse 3. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. Now, we'll stop right there. That does, He's not saying they've never sinned. He's saying no, cause but, and effect. I but mean, I like it, too, in that why I brought up the idea about creating a perfect being. Because I got out of that between the lines. This wasn't anything sinful or fault. as a result right. there wasn't That's a fault it, you know so that was it so he says but <laughs> this happened so that and here's the new theology but this happened so that the work of god might be displayed in his life god saw it coming because he's i am i mean back to jace's point That's so right. he knows everything <laughs> so he knew this guy was blind and so from the human perspective it's like well wait a minute that ain't fair. I don't want to be blind. I mean, just so God's work can be displayed. Again, we're looking at it when we turn it over to our prism. It's always about fairness. Well, it's always about you know this isn't right. You know, well, why does he? Why is she sick? And over here, this one survived. Why did my aunt die of this? And this one was healed. You know what I'm saying? That's where people go. But he is also then he then also goes to what real blindness is because he. He then goes into an interesting thing, which is the theme of the book of John. One of the themes, mm-hmm. which is light. He says, as long, <clears throat> as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he went into this seeing and not seeing, which there are hundreds of references on people being able to see but can't see right which is his point because you know you're like why in the previous chapter remember we talked a whole podcast about when he said Mm -hmm. in me there is no darkness you could he keeps going back to this on what true seeing is all about which we're going to talk about the next you could put phyllis right in there yeah this happens so that the work of god is played you say here's this girl didn't know who i was right here i am I don't know who she is. Correct. Forty-five years. Correct. I had. I, she mentioned it. I had no idea. Right. Well, all of a sudden, you said, "Well, why did that story turn out like it did?" Right. So the God will be Phil, displayed I, in her life and mine. I think you're well, exactly Phil, I right. I think. I think this That's statement. That's weird. You know what? I yes. think this statement is for everyone. That's right. Oh yeah. It doesn't. Some people have it from birth. In this case, there was a physical condition. My my daughter. She was born with a physical challenge yep. that has been going on for 16 years. Right. How many operations so far? Too many to count. Yeah, a lot. Yep. Several. Major and, operations. Yeah. and uh, So someone so, would come to you and say, Jace, where did well, you go, yeah, where'd well, you go who's wrong? Seeing, now, who, who's, whose fault? Yeah, and who, look, that, that's what these, some of these, what makes me mad is every once in a while you see some kind of lawsuit deal. It's like, was your... You know, your kid born with a cleft palate, you know, well, let's sue somebody because of prenatal vitamins or oh, what, you know, because they're to. trying to find where it all went wrong. Now, look, I'm sure there are a few things out there in life where mm-hmm. we can have a cause and effect, but most stuff, we don't know. They don't know why kids are born like that. One eight, one out of 800 kids are born with some form of that condition. Right. You just think that's a lot of that's a lot of people. It is. So uh, you don't know, and and you have to go through a process because this. I really read that I hung out in this chapter a lot the first couple of months. You know what's I, amazing, Jace? I never looked at your daughter as if she had any of that. I I just yeah. look at her as a right. little. Grandchild. Well, I think when you understand who God is, that's what happens. And and Jason and Missy have handled it beautifully through the whole process because it's been a hard process. I mean, there were times when some of the things they had to do and some of what she had to go through was excruciating. I mean, Man. difficult. And but horrible. Again, with I that, mean, just you just compartmentalize. There's a lot of people going through stuff like that, and because like when we help other kids, we have these round table discussions you know and 
everybody's emotional, which is fine. Because it's like me, I never was an emotional person until I, till we had my daughter. But it just, I couldn't help it. It was very emotional because you're seeing your daughter just suffer in ways that are just excruciating. I mean, it's just, it's a, you can't help but be emotional. Plus, you have but, to say in all of it, too, besides God, you say the medical people, they're pretty good. They're oh, pretty no, good. they're fantastic. What they do. I mean, just think about it because this girl, I mean, she has made milestone after milestone. Mm-hmm. Well, I think in either one of these cases, and we'll wrap it up, is whether you're talking about someone born with a malady, I mean, God has been, he's gotten a lot of glory out of her whole life and everything we've been able to do. And you and Missy are able to, and Mia, start a foundation, help other kids. A lot of great things have happened. In Phyllis's case, I mean, there was there was a sinful act by two people that brought about a life. Yep. But but she's not tainted by the sin. She was a beautiful life, and that's what we've seen now. Now we get a chance, forty five years later, to be introduced to that life. So that's amazing. That's how God. That's to make the point practically that we'll get into uh, when we come back is that well, one, that's what that's what God does. Yeah. One of the cheesy lines that I do like with one amendment is that God takes messes and turns them into a message of Jesus, which is the amendment because it's really not our message correct but i do think at some point in your life you could say this this happened so that the work of god may be displayed in my life everyone has that moment yep i have we all have so we're so glad you guys were with us today you can subscribe on itunes or spotify or youtube or facebook and be sure and rate us on itunes so that other people can know about the podcast